What's going on guys, it's Cliffy here. God, it feels like a long time since I've done a recording. I think today, well today is Thursday, I don't think it's Thursday, I know it's Thursday. But the last time I did a recording, I think was Monday when COD Advanced Warfare was released. As you may be able to tell from my voice, I have been fighting a bit of a bug for the past couple of days. I've actually been bedridden, which hasn't been ideal, obviously, with Advanced Warfare coming out. I finally managed to go and uh, get some gameplay of that done. Uh, today I didn't record it but I wish I had because I actually had some decent games. I know I did say in one of my commentaries earlier in the week um, that I was going to go and do uh, s some COD gameplay slash commentary uh, and then I realised that really I'm not that great of a COD player and to be fair I really am not. I only just got my KD up above 1, I think it's about 1.04 now but I really have been struggling. So that's why I haven't gone um, and shown it. Who knows, maybe now I may go and potentially pick up um, a bit more skill somehow, maybe, and uh, then we can go and potentially do one. But for now, back into Donny B. It feels like a long time since I've done this. Obviously, I've been doing cricket coach as well lately, um, but real good to get back into Donny B. And this is actually the uh, quarterfinal game of the English T20 competition. Haven't actually faced a ball yet. Just noticed that now. We'll go, we'll get the last ball with the over. Hopefully we can do something. I remember last time we had a bat on one of these commentaries, we actually made a golden duck, which isn't ideal, but hopefully we can go and turn it around. So yeah, quarterfinals time in the T20 blast, whatever you want to call it. And, ooh, it's hit a bit uppish, but at least it's not a golden. So into the quarterfinals, so that means we've got this game, we win this, we've got the semis, and we win that, we've got the finals. So another three games, and then we're back, I'm guessing, to some international stuff, possibly some Aussie domestic, not too sure as of yet. But a lot of people have been saying about doing my new career mode as uh, the New Zealand domestic teams. And I guess with our T20 comp starting up and our domestic season starting up, I'm probably going to go and look at doing that very soon. So I think maybe once I finish this um, tournament, I guess you would say, I will go and look at starting that up. i just got to remember how to do it because I remember reading it somewhere, I remember seeing it somewhere, but I can't quite remember how to do it. But I mean, it can't be too hard and I'll go and sort that out because that will be pretty cool. Going to start off as a batsman just so we go and have a bit more batting clips. I'm either going to open or come in at number three. I think we're going to open the batting, which would be quite cool. And I'll probably make myself a batting all-rounder because then I get the odd chance to go and roll the arm over as well. A lot of people have said to go and be a real unorthodox style of bowling, like a left-arm Chinaman, left-arm orthodox or something like that. I cannot bowl spin in this game. Um, as you may have seen on a few games of you, me, and Donny B, I cannot bowl spin. So that is out of the question. I might make myself uh, just a wee little generous medium pacer as we finally manage to go and get off the mark. It's not the most convincing of shots, but Graham Napier back on strike for the last ball. And we've picked up a run, so that is always promising. Right, final ball of this over. After this, two overs left to go. Napier goes big. Has he gone to a fielder? Yes, he has. And we crossed as well. Why do we cross? That means I don't get to face the first ball. Or does it? Crossed. I'm just trying to figure this out. I'm, I'm actually not sure. This guy here, Mills, he actually... Oh, we did cross. Right, I'm going to have to start going for a slog soon. Jimmy Taylor, still bowling his league spinners. I didn't know that he was... Oh, shit. A lot of people said change the batting camera. I'm starting to agree with them. Maybe change uh, the non-strikers camera as well because another almost run out. It hasn't happened for a while. That's just a wee little chip into the gap. We'll pick up one. And hopefully we can go and do something here because one off three. I think maybe with the bowling attack we have, we may potentially have enough. I have no idea where I'm going to go. No idea. There's no... There's no boundary hitting options here. In fact, I'm just going to go and get myself out. Plum LBW trying to play across the line. That is just stupid. And that's what happens when you haven't played this game in a while. It has been a long time, and by a long time, I mean about a week that I've played this game. And I've just forgotten how to bat. Because that is just absolutely atrocious. That is some poor batting. We get through to 100 and... Uh, I'm just trying to do some math here, 1.8, uh, so that's about 150, 
Seven, if my mass is correct. Oh, it's 157 or 158, one of the two. But opening the bowling, and we get an outside edge first up, Alex Hales. Pretty dangerous batsman. I'm not sure if he's still the number one ranked T20 batsman in the world. I think it may be Aaron Finch. Uh, his Australian, new look Australian side, took on South Africa last night. South Africa uh, got up in the end quite easily with an over to spare, and I think about seven wickets in hand. Um, and that's kind of a bit of an experimental South African side as well. No Hashim Amla, no regular skipper. There's another edge. No regular skipper, Faf Duplessis. No A.B. de Villiers, no Dale Stain. Um, so a very new look squad. J.P. Dumini actually captaining the side. He got elevated to there. And uh, apparently he is a player that they've been looking at as a future leader. That is close to an LBW, but it's not going to be out Nottingham Shire have a very good team, and they always have had a very good team. I remember playing on uh, Cricket Captain, actually. I think it must have been about 2005. Nottingham Shire were the team that you wanted to be. My God, there's another edge. Ah, oh, that is outrageous. I think that's out of the five balls in the over, three of them have been edges. Oh, great bowling. Top bowling from the bowler. So good start to the over. That required run rate has now jumped up over eight. If we can finish off with a good ball here, which we have, just a single run off the over. So promising, very, very promising. Um, back, obviously, to that T20 game. Uh, yeah, Riley Rousseau, I think, who's been struggling in one day cricket for the South Africans. He, he kind of was um, selected to try and be, I guess, the replacement for Jack Callis. Doesn't bowl as much. Um, I think he I think he can occasionally bowl, but nowhere near in the, uh, I guess, all-rounder category that Jack Callis was in. Uh, but definitely in there for his batting. He has really struggled in the one-day arena, um, but last night he scored 78 not out of 55, I think. No one in the Australians really got going. James Faulkner was 41 off 33, and I thought the selection... Um, oh, it's a, a nice shot that. I thought the selection of the Australians was a bit strange. They seem to have, um, I guess, a very long tail, I guess you would say. Like, I'm just going to go and have a look here. But, I mean, James Faulkner, don't get me wrong, James Faulkner is on his day a good bat. And he can be, he could be a top six batter in the future. I mean, he's still young and he's still got plenty to go. But, I mean, Faulkner at six, Ben Cutting at seven. Cutting's the same. Good batsman, but I'm, you know, a player in at seven, I probably wouldn't have him at seven. I think they got it wrong there, the Australians. I think they could have potentially gone and played another batsman, um, especially with the likes of Shane Watson there. Um, I'm not sure if he actually bowled. I'll just have a look at that now as we're just getting hit away uh, by Michael Lum. Did Shane Watson bowl? Yeah, Shane Watson did bowl. He only bowled the single over, but I mean, plenty of bowling options. The Australians used seven bowlers, I think, in the end. And I think if Shane Watson probably was fully fit, he's coming back from that injury. If he was fully fit, they would have gone and played that extra batsman. But I think Faulkner at six, I think, is just probably one position too high for him. I think he should be batting at seven. We pick up a wicket. Michael Lum, caught and bowled, one of our, were there any caught and bowls last night? No, there was not. I'm just trying to see if there's anyone, Kyle Abbott, I think it's Kyle Abbott, is it Kyle Abbott? Yeah, Kyle Abbott, he had a pretty outstanding game with the ball for the South Africans, 3 for 21 off his 4 overs, um, and no one from the Australians really standing out. Faulkner bowled 3 overs, none for 17. Monty Panesar into the attack, ooh, that's hit down the ground, it's a bit uppish, but it's not going to matter. So... All in all, a pretty good game by South Africans. Three game T20 series. You don't see that uh, very much of. But that is coming to be. I'm just trying to think what else is happening. I know Bangladesh and Zimbabwe are taking uh, each other on in a test match. Not that anyone probably is too concerned about that. India taking on Sri Lanka in the second one day of tonight. And I think New Zealand start their first test match in the UAE against Pakistan on Sunday, about 7 o'clock New Zealand time. And that should be a good series to see how New Zealand can go and cope. Obviously, the Australians didn't have a very good series uh, not too long ago, losing 2-0, uh, losing that last game by about 350 runs. And it'll be interesting to see how... Um, I guess our players will go how our bowlers will go against those Pakistani batsmen because a lot of them, um, especially in the top order, are in form. And the bowlers, I guess, are in form as well. When you win by 350 runs, you have to take wickets. And, oh, that's uppish. And the Pakistani bowlers did look in good form. Ish Sodi's looked good in the warm-up matches. He took five for, I know, in the first inning. Saudi took a few as well. Um, 
No one really scored too many runs, I think, which that probably is a wee bit of a concern. Uh, but I think come come game time, I think they'll go and, and pick it up, definitely. I know Corey Anderson scored some runs in the warm-up, but I think apart from that, there really wasn't too many. Right, so we're coming in to our final over very soon. We're not going to bowl our four in a row, which is quite surprising. We've been brought back, uh, given an overs respite. And we'll switch to our favourite field, Pace Defence 10. I've got a real bad cough that's coming along. I can just feel it in the back of my throat now, and I just want to cough heaps. Oh, that is some great fielding. He hasn't been very uh, effective at taking the wickets, but very effective at keeping the run rate down. And I guess in T20... If you're not taking wickets, and you're keeping the run rate down, then that's fine. Like, if I was a captain of a T20 side, and I have a player who's a very economical bowler but doesn't take wickets, that's fine by me. Because if he's bowling economically, it means that the batsmen are going to be more aggressive towards the other bowlers, which increases the chances of them taking a wicket. So all in all, at the end of the day, it is a team sport, and if a player can go and contribute like that, um, speaking of that, about not picking up wickets, we've actually got Ed Cowan caught behind, and that is good because since the patch has been released, obviously a lot more wickets now being out caught behind. Ed Cowan, see you later. Tennis Scarter, the wicket keeper there, he doesn't take many. He's actually captaining the Otago Vaults this season, which uh, I I only just found out the other day when I was watching the highlights of the uh, of the Super Smash. I keep try I keep wanting to call it the Big Bash, but it's not the Big Bash. It just the Georgie Pie Super Smash just doesn't have the same ring to it as the KFC Big Bash. Just does not have the same ring to it. Right, so this is the final ball of our spell. Bowling to Samit Patel. I was going to say it was Jeetan Patel, but there's no way that he would bat up that high. Um, that is that out? No, it's not out. It's obviously hit the ground. I don't even know if that came off the bat or if it came off the pad. So the run rate is now up above 10, and I can't imagine... Nottingham Shire going and getting up there. As you can see, end of the game. They've only managed 95 runs. Samit Patel, he scored 47 off 43. We picked up 2 for 14, which is pretty good. And we march on to the semi-finals. Anyway, guys, do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please remember to leave a like if you are new. Please do subscribe. Do tune in tomorrow. I'm going to have a video. That may be a COD Advanced Warfare one, um, or it could be a FIFA one. Keep your eyes peeled for that, and make sure you do not miss it.